Good afternoon, and once again, everyone. Welcome to our uh, daily encouragement. Thank you for your faithfulness. I hope you're doing well. And as we continue with our lesson, please turn your Bible to um, Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 and uh, to 3. And it says there, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is not my heir. Let us pray. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we are so thankful once again for providing us this time. Please guide us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So today we are studying the name of God, another one. If you will see in verse 2, when Abram responded to God, he said, Lord God. And if you will see it there, you will note that that word, Lord God, the word Lord there is the capital L and small O-R-D. That's the name that we are studying today. And that name in Hebrew is the name Adonai, Adonai. Now, in the previous study that we had, the previous names that we studied, you will see that that word, the name El, the name Elohim, Jehovah, El Shaddai, all of those names are related to the person of God. But the name Adonai, the name that is under consideration today, lays a definite claim on man and his responsibility. The previous names is about the person of God, but this name now that we have that we are studying, Adonai, or translated Lord, is saying that God has a claim to us. This word Adonai was translated 300 times. Uh, was used 300 times in the Bible and translated to that word, capital L-O-R-D. And what is very unusual about this word is that when you see this word used in the Hebrew, for example, in Genesis 15, verse 2, you will note that this, Lord, this word Lord is always in plural. You see, there's a similarity between this Lord here, always in plural, and Elohim, which is again in plural form. If you come to, it can remind us that this is implying once again the doctrine of Trinity, that God is three persons in one God. So this confirms when it is used all the time as plural in the Old Testament, confirms the idea of Trinity. It was used 215 times for men, and whenever it is translated, it is translated either uh, these three terms, like Master, Lord, or Sir. Now, the, the name Adonai, or translated as Lord, signifies ownership and mastership it indicates the truth that god is the owner of every human being whether believers or unbelievers everyone every creature in this universe is under the lordship the mastership and ownership of god himself deuteronomy 10, 17 says, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God and a mighty and terrible with which regarded not persons nor taketh reward. That word mighty means powerful and that word terrible means awesome. Which means that we are to view God as an awesome God that we, that he is so powerful that we put ourselves in this. So, what is the significance of this name? Number one, for us, the word Lord 
or Adonai means there is a slave and master relationship between us and God. We are his slaves and he is our master. As such, we can expect protection, help, and direction from him. That name, Adonai, means we are slave and we can seek his help. Secondly, that we can always depend upon his faithfulness to provide, to give us all the things that we need. You see, if human beings can be master and provide for their slaves, how much more God can do that? Number three, that whenever God tells us to do something, commands us to do something, he enables. You remember that in the case of uh, Abraham, he enabled him to do all the things. And Philippians also mentioned about uh, Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ. And you remember Moses when he was saying that, I am a stutterer, I cannot speak, but God said, who gives man their tongue? You see, when we say Adonai, not God not only commands, but when he commands, he enables his people to serve him. In the same token, the fourth thing that we can see here is that Adonai demands our obedience and service. You see, if we view God, if we consider God as our Adonai or Lord, then we will always be obedient and allow ourselves to be available to serve Him. Number five, whoever considers themselves to be servants of God, whether there were kings before in Israel, the prophets of old, even the pastors and uh, every believer, when we recognize that God is our Adonai or Lord, therefore, we will know, we will recognize that He has the right to command us, to dispose us in the way He sees fit, that He has the right to give us His will and expects us to obey Him all the time and be under His will. But Adonai also tells us that there will be a day of reckoning. The day of reckoning, the day of judgment, wherein he will, we will be accounting for everything that we serve God, that we obey Him. Remember in 1 Corinthians where it says there that uh, our works of service will be tried under fire. And lastly, to be the servant is the greatest of all joy. You see, there's an irony whenever we realize that God gives everything. It is, when God gives everything, it is contrary to the opinion of the world. In God's case, when we consider God as our master and Lord, this is the joyous moment of our lives. Men, by his nature, needs direction. All the things that we have are marred. And we are marred and our opinion, our view of things are not correct because of the sin. But when God gives us direction, when we seek His Lordship, then He gives us direction and guidance for our lives. And this, has, this gives us joy in this life, then when we serve under God, we have direction and guidance and love from our Lord. Adonai demands from us obedience and service. Thank you, everyone. I hope you are blessed by this name.